Well, all right, so let's get started. Um, first of all, I want to apologize for not being able to um, show up last week because I uh, of uh, I got uh, um, I, there was a medical situation that I had to attend to, and I uh, wasn't feeling well. I had a um, an epidural shot in my a hip because I've had a back surgery and I still have a I have a hard time standing so I um, ha went to get this shot but then what it did is that my heart palpitation went up and I had to go to the urgent care to make sure that everything is okay and everything is fine uh, I have a little bit of a cold today so uh, I, if my voice is a tad bit scratchy um, I apologize for that but I think we can make do because we have a very very juicy topic that I'm covering today and that is how to handle infidelity um, you know I cannot tell you how many um, women um, come to me who have experienced this situation and it has really put a um, Put a um, kind of a um, it's stopping them from um, finding love it's stopping them from opening their heart because they have experienced this um, really hurtful thing with a man that they thought would be the right person for them right and then lo and behold they find out that it wasn't that and the man actually has cheated on them so I really I'm coming to this call today um, with hopes that to to give you with hopes to give you tools so that you can move on because nothing feels worse for someone who loves to love and be loved and most humans want to be in pairs because that's our nature and then they feel like they can't move on because of this situation so that said um, with my battery going off on one of my uh, stuff okay you know what ladies give me a second here because um, I'm gonna put this here so give me one second so you guys can actually hear me better okay if you're coming on say hi and um, I just lost the ladies in the on the Instagram so give me a second let me get that back because um, you never know with technology what happens okay I'm connecting back with Instagram so all right Instagram people hello hello all right so I'm gonna say hello again and um, today I want to I am coming to you to talk about how to handle infidelity well first of all um, I'm gonna be totally transparent with you I was in um, a number of relationships. I was in 11 relationships before I found um, my life partner where I uh, was cheated on or I didn't 100% know that I was cheated on but very soon, like in about a week or two, I heard that the person that I was dating or I was in a relation, not dating, but I was in a relationship with they were in a relationship with somebody else. So I um, am coming to you uh, not only from a place of experience, but also I have gone to the other side of the, the hurt, the uh, feeling of uh, being back, feeling that backstabbing feeling when some, you know, when you feel that the person that you love has cheated on you. So uh, it is so important that you truly give yourself uh, permission uh, to feel the feelings and it is so important that you process the feelings because here is the thing and if you're coming on say hi to me because I always always want to know who you are and who is 
who is on the call today. And as always, you know, I am, I love knowing the people in my community. So this is totally your chance to chat with me, wave hands, send hearts, or just ask questions um, because I'd love to get to know you. And the more you ask questions, the more I know what it is that you need so I can answer it and I can be there for you. All right, so here is the thing. It hurts to know that the person that you loved has cheated on you. It hurts to know, hi, Berta. It hurts to know that the person that you trusted, that the person that you felt is someone maybe that you're going to create your life with um, and you're going to have a future with, turned out to be a person who um, took advantage of that trust was not honest with you and left. So here is the thing. Although it is so easy to point fingers at, hi, Genia, awesome. Um, although it is so easy to point fingers and blame the person who cheated on us or who was infidel to us and constantly making that person wrong, is somehow gives us a temporary relief because it justifies our hurt. It makes us to be the better person. It um, basically puts us in the right and puts them in the wrong. And more than anything, we have a reason to dislike that person so that we can move on, right? Because we, if we like them, then moving on and saying goodbye is so much harder. But here is the thing. As I've said this many, many times in my courses, in my um, emails that I send out weekly, in any time that I've been teaching, my quality man method, which is the method that I teach my clients in order to attract quality, relationship-ready men into their lives so that they can choose their future life partner. So I work with um, single you know, ambitious and high achieving women who are really good at what they do at work, but this part of their life has not been figured out for them. Although it feels, um, you know, so natural to be in that place of blaming, it is 100% your responsibility. Yeah. It's 100% your responsibility to heal yourself and move away from that experience so that you can open your heart to the right man. So often what happens, and believe me, I'm telling you this because I fell in the trap myself and it took me a while to figure it out and that's why I'm coming here today to talk to you because summer is around the corner we're almost getting to the middle of 2019. And for many of you, this is the year that you want to find love. But you're so busy being angry and being scared and having your proverbial boxing gloves up and protecting yourself and bobbing and weaving and making sure that you are not double-crossed again by men, that you are not actually um, really giving the right men an opportunity to come into your life. Because the right men, the quality men who come into your life, they see you, but what are they seeing? They see a closed off, angry, hi Anna, unavailable woman. And no quality man, no man who is ready to find love and is ready to move on and is ready to bring this new person who might be you into their life wants to be babysitting another woman or babysitting a woman emotionally. So one of the codes of conduct of an irresistible woman, which is the type of woman that I teach my clients to be, I teach them the art of irresistibility, meaning you can call it authenticity. You can call it being totally in integrity with who you are, being your most brave, vulnerable self, the most confident, person that you are, right? You can call it all these names. I call it the irresistible woman. Part of being that irresistible woman is 
that you need to take responsibility for the way you handle adversity, for the way you handle rejection, for the way you handle infidelity, for the way you handle heartbreak. It is 100% your job. And what happens so often is that women and men, because I, I, I actually do have some male clients as well. So women and men, what we do is we, um, we go ahead and we take in um, this notion of being holier than thou, right? Because we didn't do anything wrong. And we get stuck in this place of being angry and hurtful and we repeat and repeat and repeat the story of being cheated on and hurt over and over and over. Be honest. If you are that person, give me a thumbs up. If you are that person who holds on to negativity in terms of a man doing you wrong, you know, uh, being in fiddle with you or cheated on you, be honest. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Give me, a, exactly, good job, ladies. Thank you for being honest. Give me a thumbs up if you are that person because the first step, and please make sure you have a pen and paper because you want to write these things down that I'm telling you because there's going to be a bunch of stuff um, so that you can review it. So number one is if you want to handle infidelity, you have to take 100% responsibility for the way that you are showing up about your love life. Meaning, if you are still going out there and you're still making men wrong and you're still saying stuff, bashing men and saying, men want one thing and one thing only and that's sex, well, guess what? You are attracting exactly that into your life. And it's not woo-woo and it's not voodoo and it's not... It's not some, you know, magic happening. No, it is exactly what our brain does. We have this part in our brain, which I've talked about before, but I'm going to repeat it again because repetition is the key to learning. There is this part of our brain called the reticular activating system. And the reticular activating system is in charge of, um, uh, uh, what's the word for it? Um, Oh my goodness, there's a word in English. I don't know it in Persian either. Um, it, it goes through information and sorts out information for us, right? It organizes the information for us. And it basically puts our attention, right? It focuses on, it brings up what our attention is on and brings that up in front of us. There's a better word in English, but for some reason, it's just, it, you know, leading me right now. So I, I, I'm I, just going to explain it the best I can. So you have this part in your brain called, called the reticular activating system or the RAS or the RAS, however you call it, right? So this part of your brain, it goes through information and it brings out things that your attention is on. So let's say you just bought a new Prius, right? Um, like 2019 Prius. You go on the street and you're driving, right? And as you're driving, you see, wow, that guy is driving a new Prius. Oh, and that guy is driving a new Prius. Oh, and that guy is driving a new Prius. Oh, my God, that Prius is even exactly the color of my Prius that I just got. Right? So your mind slips through, slips, slips through information around you and brings to your attention where your attention is. So I want you to write this down. You are where your attention is. You are where your attention is. You are, your being is where your attention is. If your attention is on making sure that you never meet another cheater in your life, that you are so careful that no cheater cross passes you again, guess what? All you're gonna see in guys around you is making sure that you, you pinpoint the cheaters so that you can avoid them. But what is that doing to your love life? 
what that is doing to your love life. It's basically telling you that men are cheaters. Because guess what? I have all this evidence of men being cheaters. Thank you, Deborah. Right? Exactly, Genia, it is old habits. That's right. So, and you constantly bring your, put your attention on what you don't want, you get what you don't want. You've probably heard of the law of attraction and many, many, many educated women I've seen, it doesn't work, you know, that's got to woo, 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 whatever. No, it's actually the way the brain works. So I'm talking to those of you who, naysayers, who are turning something that our brain does into some woo-woo BS. It's not woo-woo, it actually exists. That's how our brain can take in information. Now, why is this important to know? Because if your brain wants to pay attention to everything that's around us, right? For example, I have, this is how this looks like. Well, I can't actually show you because if I show one person, the other person misses it. So I'm just going to describe. I have three screens in front of me right now. I have the Dating uh, with Confidence Facebook page, which connects to my private group, Irresistible Woman, which is for my women who are working with me privately. And then Dating with Confidence is my Facebook page. I have another screen that's connecting to Instagram. And then I have another screen, which is you lovely ladies, Dating Tips for Savvy Single Ladies, which is my free and private group on Facebook, which if you guys are not on there, and if you are a single, savvy, high-achieving, educated, career-focused woman, you should have been in that group two days ago. So go ahead and find that group and join it pronto. I am seeing all this stuff in front of me. In addition, I see the painting behind me. I see my glasses. I see my hair doing crazy stuff and going in all sorts of directions, but that's normal for me. <laughs> I see people coming on and, you know, sending hearts and, you know, thumbs up and comments. If I want to pay attention to every single one of these three screens and everything that's going on, I'm going to lose my train of thought for talking to you. So my RAS focuses on the camera only. I, I told myself, yeah, I've trained my brain, right, to focus only on the cameras and speak directly to you ladies so that I can stay on point. And then from time to time, I look down and make sure that if there are any comments, I respond to it. Does that make sense? That's why we have the RAS in our brain. That's why we have that system set in place so that we're not stuck and um, we don't have the attention span of a gnat, right? So that we can really focus on what it is that we want to do or where it is that, that our attention is. Now, so I just want to review what I told you so far. So number one, 100%, how to handle infidelity. Step one, you've got to take 100% responsibility 100% of the time. And I was just talking to a client right now, Jill. She's a sweetheart, and she was... Um, she and uh, a guy that she has been seeing, they have been, you know, coming to a conclusion that this is not the right thing for them. This, you know, dating um, in this, this form of relation, they, the two of them are not a match. And she was telling me, you know, Rayka, it's something to take 100% responsibility 100% of the time. Because my, my old self wants to make him wrong. I want to put something on him and tell him that he's wrong about something so that it's like, poor me, I can't find love again, see what's going on with me, and I can be angry. Because if I actually accept that he is a good guy and I say goodbye to him and I let release it, that means I have to take responsibility to create my love life. No shit. Yes, you do. And this is not just your love life. Everything that I'm saying applies to every single part of your life. You can take this subject if you are, especially on Instagram, since, you know, anybody can come on these live videos, you can take what I'm saying and you can change it and reframe it in, in the area that you need to really be honest with yourself. I know I have to be quite honest with myself when it comes to self-care, especially when it comes to exercising. I have a lot of relationship with exercising. So it is so important that you take 100% responsibility 100% of the time.
of the time. Then I taught you about you are where your attention is. It is not your texts that gets the man. It is not your look that made your ex cheat on you. It is not your hair color that made your ex cheat on you. It is not your, um, you know, quality as a, as a physical quality that made your ex cheat on you. It is none of that. It is the way that you are being and showing up that cause that relationship to not be a match for you. And that doesn't mean you are a bad being. It means you guys are not a match. Because even if you were not a match, that doesn't mean your ex should go and cheat on you. You could say, hey, you know, um, Sally, I don't think that we're the right match. So I really want you to understand, because we women, the first thing we do is that we self-deprecate and we tell ourselves how bad we are, how unlucky we are, how not good-looking we are, how this, that, and the other we are, that a man is not picking us and they go and pick somebody else. And that is one of the most self-sabotaging habits that we take on as women. Or the other habits some of us have, those of us who have more masculine energy, and masculine doesn't mean manly, meaning a more, you know, do it, get things done, checking the to-do lists off, you know, boss, hashtag boss lady, you know, the CEO, managerial, you know, head of the surgery department type women. That woman, what, it, what she might be doing is blaming and making the man wrong. Neither one of these habits is going to get you closer to your love life, closer to the right man for you. Because your true irresistible self is not showing up. So you really want to be aware of who you are being and who you are being is completely related to where your attention is, right? So if your attention is making men wrong, you are going to be a very negative person around men, love, dating. Who wants to be around that? You don't want to be around that. So do men. Quality men don't want to be around that. Okay. Then I talked to you about the RAS, reticular activating system in your brain and what it does. So if you missed that, make sure you go back, listen to what the reticular activating system does because that is completely related to you are where you, uh, you're, you are where your attention is. Now the next thing you want to do is that you really want to understand that in order to move on with infidelity, it is so important that you understand what forgiveness means and forgiveness is a is a tough subject so it's definitely not something i'm going to be you know teaching all of it here it's something i teach in my irresistible woman course forgiveness is tough because so often when we have been wronged and believe me as i said earlier today uh, i mean earlier in this call i have been there when I, where I have been cheated on 11 times and by my fiance, including my fiance. So I know how difficult it is to go through this process of infidelity. But forgiveness so often is misunderstood. Forgiveness is a gift you give to yourself. Forgiveness is not to Forgive the guy and make him right. Forgiving and making something right are two different things. Forgiveness, in a nutshell, means detaching yourself from that story, from that guy, from repeating that story over and over and over and over in your head. You might even need to forgive yourself. I know I have to forgive myself for the choices that I've made. And I was very honest about it. I could not possibly make better choices when I didn't know any better. 
right? We can't make the choices that are above us. We can only make choices based on our knowledge. So it's very important that we understand forgiveness is the guy is irrelevant in the forgiving act. Forgiveness is so that you detach from that story and that cycle and you give yourself space for a new story, for a new man to come in. Are you guys picking on what I'm putting down? Can you give me a yes or no? Either way is fine. And for those of you who are listening to this at home, because you got this through my email, you can always email me back and let me know how uh, you can, um, well, first of all, how is, is this making sense to you or not? Awesome. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Yame. Thank you, thank you. Ah, my voice, come back. Okay, I have an audition next week, so better come back. All right, so my I'm going to move my attention. My, my voice is going to come back. I can see it. It's going to be great. I'm going to sing amazingly. And then I'll let you guys know how it went. Thank you, Anna. Okay, good job. Thank you, ladies, for letting me know that this is making sense. And if, it, if anything I say doesn't make sense, please always ask. Please say, you know what? Actually, I don't get what you're saying. I don't need you to agree with me. You can challenge me. I love to grow. I don't know everything. And your questions allow me to explain things in a different way so that you do get what I'm saying. So I'm coming here strictly to help you to be in service. Okay, so you want to make sure that you forgive. Um, oh, thank you, Sangeeta. Yes, I will sing beautifully. I'm singing for La Traviata. I'm singing Violetta's uh, two arias for, for Violetta. So let's see what happens. Um, if, for those of you who don't know, that's an uh, opera by Verdi. And for those of you who don't know, I'm actually also, in addition to the CEO and, and, and uh, of Dating with Confidence and a licensed life coach, I'm also a professional opera singer. So um, it's exciting, auditioning, dating, you know. Same thing. All right, so back to our topic. When you, uh, when you forgive, one of the, the things that you are doing is that you are allowing yourself to detach. Yes, Santa Libera. You're, uh, you're detaching yourself from the event that happened because our brain wants to go over it over and over and over and over thinking that we can go back and fix it that's not going to do anything for you except for connect you to that hurt and close you off even more because you're basically playing the same story over and over and over again right but when you forgive you're not condoning what you're not saying what he did was right you're saying you know what good riddance he's not a match I'm going to move on. I'm going to learn how to be a better dater. I'm going to date with more intention. I'm going to date with more education. I'm going to go educate myself and learn how to date so that I find the right man for me. Right? So it's so important that you um, really understand that your love life is 100% up to you. You get to choose who you want to be. So when you forgive, you are opening up space for the right person to come in. And you're going in this world of dating, in the dating process, a dating man, going on a date, whatever you want to call it. You're going out there dating without your bucks and loves, without being scared that this guy might be also like that guy. And this guy has nothing to do with that guy. Right? So infidelity happened, but you can absolutely play a major role in healing it. And you are the only person who can do that. Nobody can do the healing process for you. And so often, if we let go of what happened, it feels like you're letting go of the wrong that was done to you. So I want to give you permission to forgive knowing that there is nothing right with what the guy did. It is absolutely not 
I won't say human, but it's not the best choice to cheat on someone. If a guy doesn't, it's true, it's like ghosting. And you have to understand why do men, why do men or women, because women do it too, let's be honest, women cheat as well, it's not just guys. Why do people cheat? Because they don't have strength and they're not brave enough to tell their part their partner at the time that things are not going right and that they're feeling disconnected and that they're unhappy. All it takes is to say, you know what, I'm not feeling happy in this relationship and I need to take a break. But so often, and let's be honest about this, so often, and this has happened because I know this with my clients, whenever I teach them, especially the first time I teach them to reject a man, the, my clients get very nervous. I don't want to hurt him. It is not your job to be responsible for the guy's feelings. He's an adult. He needs to know how to handle his feelings. Just like you are an adult and you need to know how to handle your feelings. So you can't be responsible. That is why each one of us needs to take 100% responsibility when we are dating. So super important that you understand that the, the, the past and that guy and what he did has nothing to do with the next guy that's coming in. But that process takes healing and it is your responsibility to heal it. So you gotta accept and admit that you want to take responsibility for what you know that for for how to handle your hurt and your feelings it's your feelings of being hurt after you know a, a, a relationship after a man who has been you know cheating on who had cheated on you if you have experienced infidelity it is 100 percent your responsibility to heal nobody can do that work for you you want to also make sure that when as you're doing all the stuff that i told you Right, moving your attention, taking responsibility. Hi, Tammy. Taking your taking responsibility, um, understanding who you are, being forgiving. You also want to understand that you are more powerful and more wise than you give yourself credit for. So every time you go into this place of connecting to that old messaging, to that old story, to what happened to you with your ex who cheated on you. You are robbing yourself from allowing your heart to open up to the right now. Now, this part of what I'm going to teach you, and this is the last thing I'm going to say before I wrap up. If you have any questions, this is the time to, to type because it takes some time for it to, to get to me on this end. So please go ahead and type your questions as soon as you can. Because this is the last point I'm making before I wrap up. It is okay to feel sad. It is okay to feel hurt. We live in a society that is numbing us continuously for feeling sad and down. Take this medication and take that medication and do this medication and da 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 feel sad it's okay because you've got to process those feelings and one of the biggest fears that we have around infidelity and, and, um, and being cheated on is we don't want to feel sad so what do we do we become mad because it makes us feel that we're more in control Oh, thank you so much on my dating superpowers. I appreciate that you love my videos. <laughs> thank you. So it is really, you can, you can see the replay again. It is very important that you understand that your feelings are not going to kill you. So often we're running from our feelings. So often we are coming to our feelings from a place of, oh my God, I don't want to feel that because it feels really bad. I want you to feel the feeling, 
sense where it is, and then at the same time, start focusing on what you do have. It is not all or nothing, ladies. I remember the day that my fiance left um, in 2010. It was November, and I remember I had started doing this work, right? I was a coach then, and when he left, I was very sad, and I knew he had cheated on me, even though he didn't tell me. And of course, lo and behold, three months later, it all came out on social media, all places. Um, but I remember sitting there, sitting where I am, actually, in my kitchen right now, because my office, it, there's some stuff, work going on. In so I was sitting here, right on this chair, right here on this very chair and i remember putting my feet on the ground and touching the the floor of the kitchen and telling myself i'm sad but i have a roof over my head and i would say both the good thing and the bad thing i'm sad i'm hurting i'm scared because i don't know how to tell the family and i don't know how to tell everyone and everybody's going to ask me and what if what if what if what if what if but at the same time, I'm safe. At the same time, I live in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. At the same time, I have my tools. At the same time, I have love in my family, in my friends. I have people who love me. I have the wisdom to know the difference between sadness and having what I have. So I started doing from right off the bat, I started seeing both sides of my life parallel to each other. The loss and everything that I have. I remember telling myself that I still have my job, I still have my clients, I have my boy students. I have the wisdom to know this, and everything will be okay. And I remember I, I, my very good friend at the time, when I called her, she came and she took me to her home and I stayed with her for a week because it was really hard for me to come home and be by myself. But I allowed to be taken care of. I articulated my feelings. And this time, which was the last time I got cheated on, was different. The previous times I would get angry and I would get attacking and I would get pitchy and I would close off and I would even go as far as I'm going to go speak with as many men as possible so I could hurt them. But really what I was doing, I was numbing myself and hurting myself because that was so not in alignment with my irresistible self. That was not who I was. My irresistible self is a loving, giving, nurturing, kind being. Raika, my name, means kind and loving. And I felt so out of alignment. No wonder I made one mistake after another because I went after the guys in all the wrong ways. But when I actually gave myself a chance to heal and to see the good and the bad at the same time, and to process the sadness, to journal about it, to talk to people. That's when the healing started taking place. Um, Yame says, I had the same experience the other day. I felt down, so I reminded myself that I have what I have, but it didn't work until the next day. That's fine. You mean you felt down, you felt depressed, and you reminded yourself of what you have, you went into gratitude, you reminded yourself of all the gifts you have, and it started working, you know, until the next day. That's very good, young man. That's better than... Some people get stuck in being in that negative place, and you know this more than anybody, because you and I have worked with each other now for a while. You know how much longer it took at the beginning to turn things over in a day. That's nothing. That's beautiful that's a win people get stuck in that sadness of infidelity or being cheated on or hurt for years years 
and you did it within a day. That's a huge victory. So you should celebrate that. You should be so proud of yourself for noticing and having the awareness. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. You are not going to... In life, you are going to experience shitty experiences. I guarantee you it will happen because that's life. That's how life works. We have ups and we have downs and, and that's what composes our lives. We're not, you know, robots, we're humans. The, there is no art, the art, well, let, let's put it this way. The, the art is not, oh my God, I, I'm gonna avoid, which is what 99% of the single people out there are trying to do. 99% of the single women out there are trying to avoid feeling bad. So they're walking with their protective shields, right? And they're like, well, when the guy does this, that, and the other, and I trust him, then I'm gonna become vulnerable. Eh, it ain't gonna work. If you want to create your love life, you need to be the woman who is already being in a person who has love in her life. Because that's when quality men are gonna see you and wanna be with you. It's the be, do, have model of operation, which is what I teach in my quality man method, right? So in that formula, be, do, have, you wanna be the person who's already attracting the right guys. But if you say, I will be happy, I will be trusting, I will be loving, when the guy shows me that he's worthy of it, well, good luck to you. And my biggest question to you is, how is that working for you? Because if it's working for you, you wouldn't be listening to me right now. You wouldn't be in my community. You wouldn't need to get tips around your love life, right? So really take this to heart. I would love to know what have you learned from this video. I know I put a bunch of tools in here that you uh, need to review and practice. What is your takeaway? Remember, if you don't write your takeaways down after you hear these videos, basically what you're doing is psychological entertainment. So if you want to find love and if you want to really make sure that what I'm teaching you is going to work for you, you got to put it into action. And writing down your takeaway and saying how that will impact the way you're going to show up in your love life is a form of committing to a new way of being. So I can't wait to hear from you. As you see, I'm personable. I love to know about the people who are in my community. You are never asking too many questions. You are never asking stupid questions. You are important. You count. You matter. You matter to me if you're in my community. So make sure if you're also seeing this in an email that came to you at home, write to me and tell me what your takeaway is. I'm always interested. And as always, if you have any questions, ladies, please ask me in the dating tip group, dating tips for savvy single ladies. The link is um, always available to you in the email. And for those of you who are listening to me on Instagram or Dating with Confidences page, you just have to go to Facebook and type in dating tips for savvy single ladies. And with that, I want to bid you farewell. And I would, oh, and ask your questions because your question can be exactly the topic of our next Facebook Live that I will cover. So don't hesitate to send me a message uh, or email or post it in the group, uh, post your question in the group, and I can be choosing that. This was one of the questions that came to me that one of the ladies wanted me to cover. So I uh, always love to help and I always love to do that for you. Have a wonderful day until next Tuesday. 6 p.m. Pacific time. I'll see you on Instagram, Dating Tips Group, or Dating with Confidence's Facebook page. Bye! Or on your email.